this novel called My Magical Palace, which actually started out as a story about loss. And it sort of morphed into all kinds of experiences human beings have. Um, and it's really about breaking the rules to follow your heart. So the, some of the themes that are in this book are, first of all, we have all experienced in high school, or mostly in high school, that we are not exactly fitting in with the with the mold that we're supposed to fill. There's something odd. Are they too fat or too thin or the wrong religion or not dressed properly, too poor or something like that? So after at that point, we start lying about who we are, trying to hide our defects from other people so we can be loved. And ironically, we create that person who is getting the love, but it's not the real person anymore. Um, and society always marginalizes anybody that it consider, considers as different. So, uh, I mean, it's usually a minority that doesn't fit with the norms of society that get put into a little box. And it becomes an us versus them, a right versus wrong issue. Meaning the majority is right and the minority is wrong. Um, and then it just justifies, society then justifies the mistreatment of these people. They can take away their, some of their rights, they may, uh, you know, discriminate, uh, discriminate against them or just have general, you know, policies, government policies that don't allow them to ever uh, succeed in life. So a lot of things can be done by the majority to the minority. And sometimes there's physical abuse too. That happens a lot. People get lynched all the time. Um, so this book has several characters. I mean, it's not just one person. So I've tried to show all the themes through different people. And the book deals with some taboo topics. So the protagonist of this book is gay. And so the intention of this book is that readers can relate to the characters. Because the truth is that we are not all different. Everyone wants the same thing, to love and to be loved. That is the bottom line. So I, for anyone to look at somebody saying there's something wrong with you externally or, or you're different, it's not true. Deep inside, we are all the same. But the tyranny of the majority continues, even today. So I have to talk about Section 377, because that t tomorrow, December 12th, is the second anniversary of this draconian law that was passed. And basically it says in India, and basically it makes it a crime to commit crimes against nature. And it came to be introduced uh, in 1860 when uh, homosexuals in, in Great Britain were being persecuted by the church. So they ran off to the British colonies. So then the, the, uh, the preachers and everybody went to each of the colonies and had the viceroys uh, and passed certain laws. And the law that hit everybody was Section 377. Some of the colonies have given it, given it up, but like South Asia, for the most part, has not. Um, and there were 80 colonies that happened in. Now, with the passing of 377, um, basically 17% of the world's LGBT population is criminalized in India. Now, how did this happen to be overturned in the first place was that in 2009, the activists went to fight and to the court. And this happened because uh, some activists are putting up safe sex posters and they were, they were arrested under this particular section of uh, the penal code. It was supposed to be, um, it's never applied, but the police arrested them. And from that point on, they fought against the government and in 2009, the High Court, which is not the Supreme Court, that's the High Court below it, actually overturned the entire, um, uh, this entire section of the Indian Penal Code and said it did not um, really match well with, um, uh, with, the, with the constitutional rights that are guaranteed to all Indians. So um, at that point on, there was great jubilation and people started having groups and, and gay pride watches, uh, marches and they had sites, dating sites coming up, everything was great. And then in 2013, um, a bunch of religious people, the Hindu, Muslim, Christian, um, they all went together to the Supreme Court and petitioned them to look at it one more time. So that's the point at which they overturned it. That was two, two years ago, tomorrow. And they said the parliament has to do something about it, we won't. And they have rejected every appeal to look at it a second time or a third. Actually, they looked at it twice and did nothing, and the third time they refused to even look at it. So um, this is an event that happened basically because 
in, not just in India, but anywhere in the world, people look at sexual minorities as different. So it becomes me versus you, you're different from me, therefore you don't have the rights I have, and I have the right to imprison you if I want to. And this, is, this law is, is so terrible that if I com complain about anyone, the police has to go. Earlier they would ignore everything, but now they have to go take that person to the, uh, to the hospital, have them surgically, like clin clinically examined by a doctor, and if the person says, yes, this person has had some kind of s uh, sexual activity, this person is thrown into jail. Um, now, uh, one thing about the crimes against nature is, is very interesting, because uh, w even when this, uh, this, uh, this section was introduced in India and everywhere else, uh, it was about sex between two consenting adults. So now you cannot really criminalize two consenting adults, no matter what they do. So, but they made nature the victim. So nature is being, is the victim of this. So it's a crime against nature. That's how they managed to create this and justify it. So anyway, this is the, the sort of the reflection of some of the things in my book. And uh, feel free to visit my site and take a look. And um, yeah, any questions? Group hub? Yeah. Oh yeah. Just me wear my other hat. Yeah. So, uh, Group Hub. I'm one of the co-founders of Group Hub, and uh, we are uh, a company that's committed to providing affordable insurance, health insurance for everyone. And we see a world where people can go anywhere, do anything, and never be worried about the cost of what happens to them if there's an accident or something untoward takes place. Um, so if we really pushing for that and it is because of our experiences, not just mine, not just Alan's, but other people who are involved, all had some really bad experiences with, uh, with the health system. So this became our first focus. So at this point we are able to take all freelancers, individuals, small companies like small uh, startups with two to five employees or even larger and we can take them, we can run quotes for them which will be, uh, they'll be at least 30% lower than the quotes, than the current uh, premium does it have at this, uh, at this point in time, basically. So it's very smooth, it's very fast. You can go to the government side, it takes 30 pages to, you know, to spool through before you get your insurance. Ask the three or four steps. So yeah, come, feel free to check us out. And it will, will, in five to 10 minutes, you'll see what you can get and then you can make up your mind if you want to do it or not. So. Hello.